today going to explore a beautiful meditation practice called RAIN. It's an acronym. And it stands for R is recognize, the A is allow, the I is investigate, and the N is nurture. And it's a technique that is designed to help us understand our internal experience and then learn to turn towards it rather than habitually run away, which is what we tend to do naturally. <laughs> because it's natural that we wanna get away from pain. Like, oh, a lot of our emotions don't feel good. So we, we move away from them, but emotions are messengers and they're all there to tell us something. So can we stay long enough to tend to ourselves, to understand the messages that we're trying to get, the parts of ourselves that are asking for support, that are needing attention, rather than continually to shove them away and to say, no, 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 no. And to do things, behaviors, substance, um, many things to get away from the way that we feel. Because while, while a feeling isn't a fact, often um, they're not accurate, they are all part of us and they, need, they do need to be attended to and listened to. So let's explore this practice, shall we? So just a little caveat, as we move through, I want you to stay with things that feel workable. I'll give you some prompts as we go, but don't go into like the deepest trauma. It's kind of like weightlifting or something. You wouldn't go into the gym and like pick up like the biggest weight and start trying to, you know, do something with it. It probably wouldn't move. So same thing here is that this is an emotional training. This is a compassion training. So we start with something that feels workable and we go from there. Yeah. So let's begin with the bell. So whenever I ring this bell, it's go time and you can sink in. So settling into your seat, settling into your body. Sometimes I imagine myself as like a big hourglass one of those with the sand in them and I'm in my head a lot. So all the sand's up top. And when I sit, I'm trying to get the sand to come down to the bottom of the hourglass. So let yourself settle. Maybe give a little wiggle to help the sand come down from the thinking mind into the feeling body. And we'll be utilizing our mind and our body, but we're really wanting to get a felt sense of what is happening in our present moment. So to support us getting into the body, we'll do a short little body scan. And as we move through the body, notice if there's any areas that feel like they need some release, any areas of tension or any areas also that feel, that feel spacious. So beginning at the points of contact with the ground. So anything that's touching the earth, shins, the feet, how does your lower body feel? And what's the relationship with the earth? Is it hard? Is it soft, cold? So begin to notice. And there's no management of the breath here. It's just coming in and out, letting the body breathe. And then bringing your awareness to your sit bones. Noticing where they're hitting, where they're contacting the bolster or the floor or a block. Noticing the hip space or lack of space. Just noticing the hips now. 
And from this area, the sacral area, this potent sacral area, we're moving up into the belly, the pelvic bowl. And then envisioning the spine from the tailbone and it taking that natural curvature up the lumbar and the thoracic and then it curves again at the cervical spine at the neck the shock absorber that we're built in with and then taking a big inhale and getting broad across the heart space so across the collarbone the sternum getting a little wider from shoulder to shoulder making space in the heart And then from the heart, extending out to the shoulders and down both arms, imagining there's like energy pouring down the arms, flipping the palms over. So it's pouring down the arms and yeah, pooling, maybe dripping out of the open palm, this gesture of receiving, of being present, being here for it, even when life gets challenging. And then lengthen the back of the neck, the crown of the head lift. Imagine you could trace along the eyebrows, some powerful marma points in here. The third eye. And as we did that little body scan, did, did you notice any areas of tightness, of tension? Any sense that something wants to let go? Any sense in the physical body that something wants a little more space? So just begin to recognize what is alive for you in this moment. Now maybe exploring a bit of emotionality here. What emotions are floating through your body? What emotions are moving through your body? What's making a visit? And how does it express itself? What does it feel like? What is it like to be you right now? What is here? Maybe there's a sense of sadness or loss. And if so, what does that feel like? Or maybe there's a sense of unworthiness or shame. That's often a common and familiar emotion. What does that feel like in the body? Where does it express itself? Or maybe there's some mobilizing energy. Maybe there's some anger or some urgency. Both of these being like mobilizing, moving forward into your body types of energy. Maybe hard to sit still. So what are the map points of that? What are the data points of what that feels like? So whatever it is here in the R, we're just recognizing what is alive, not pushing it away, but just recognizing, naming it. And breathe into it. Now, moving on to the A, allowing, letting it be here. You may notice a reflexivity to push away. Some of these emotions are not, are not ones that we normally cuddle up to, but can you just allow it and just let it be there? You don't gotta hug it, but can you just let it sit there with you? Enough to notice and see it. If you feel like you have a finger on the pulse there, then maybe you can say to this emotion, I see you and I feel you.
And maybe you're envisioning an emotion or maybe you're envisioning a part of yourself that tends to have this emotion. So in parts work, if you've heard of that, there's many different parts of us. There's a part of us that is, you know, childlike. There's a part of us that is fierce. There's a part of us that tends to be heavily criticized and maybe it can be helpful to personify these parts. So maybe there is, maybe you can visualize this part of you or maybe it's easier just as an emotion. You choose, but can you just let it be there without judging or criticizing and just get curious? So the A is just being about allowing. It's the immediate, ceasing the immediate impulse to push away. Big breath in and out. And the third piece of this, the I, investigate. This is where curiosity reigns and curiosity is such the antidote to so much so much judgment and criticism. So just getting curious, a compassionate curiosity about what's going on? What, how did you get here? What, what brought this on? Is this familiar? A really good question. Is this familiar? What most wants your attention right here? What part of this most wants your attention? Is this the part that's ever had much attention? Or has it spent a lot of time getting told to go away? Check in with your breath. Be sure that you're breathing. And is this part old? Have you had it for a while? And if so, can you remember one of the first times? Maybe you do, maybe you don't, but can you remember maybe where this came from? Where you began to feel this? getting really nuanced with the felt sense. So texture, color, expression. And we're moving on to this last piece. And this is the piece that is really challenging for some of us. And this is definitely the most challenging one for me is the nurture. So we've named what's going on and we've allowed it to stay. And then we've gotten really curious about it. We've investigated it, but often we stop right there. <laughs> but can you actually nurture it? Like what part needs tending? And likely it hasn't gotten much before. So can you soften your heart and dial up some compassion around this piece of you that's possibly hurting? If it could have some words from you, if it could choose what words that it heard to help support it, what would it be? What would those words be? If you could ask this part or this emotion, how would it like to be nurtured? Does it have an answer? Does it know? Maybe calling on some wisdom here. Maybe there's a piece of you that has this inner wisdom. We all have that part as well. Sometimes it's, been hidden, but we all have this inner wisdom where you can also like imagine and call on you know, someone in your life or an idea of wisdom, a higher self, a higher power, 
that best case scenario in with intention of the greatest good, what could be the most nurturing thing here? How could you tend? How could you nurture? And this is really asking you not only to be the one doing the holding, but also to be the one being held. Can you balance both of those? To be not only the one showing up, but to allow yourself to surrender enough to be shown up for. Taking one hand to your heart and one hand to your belly. I'm just going to share the Hapono Pono prayer for short lines that are really powerful. And some things that we don't hear enough and we don't say enough. So you can repeat after me out loud or to yourself. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Maybe one of those struck a chord or maybe they all did. Again, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Bring the hands to the knees. Begin to spiral the spine. If you're ready to move, just spiral the spine. Either you can Imagine infusing some of this in, or you can also imagine kind of moving some of the energy out. So whatever works for you with the visualization and go in both directions. Deep breath, clearing, getting receptive, creating space. And when you're ready, you can open up your eyes. <sighs> this is such a beautiful practice and it can be done on the spot. Remembering those simple words, the recognize, allow, investigate and nurture, rain, rain, remember rain. You can do it on the, you can do it whenever you need it. It can be extended. It can be really short. Just what is going on? Can I be with this? What does it need? And can I give it? We don't learn this stuff when we're younger. We're relearning, we're reparenting, recovering. So I hope this was supportive to you. Please leave a comment and let me know what came up. It'd be really beautiful to start some community around um, this practice so you can kind of read what's happening. It's really beautiful to share in your experience and to hear others as well being kind of seen and heard in that way. We do a lot of that community work in Emerge, which is coming up in April. So if you're interested in coming into a container of community to explore these practices, then check that out. And I'll see you next time on your mat.